If you are a working mother or mother-to-be who would like to strike a balance between caring for your family and succeeding in business, welcome to Mother Industrialist Live Show where we talk about entrepreneurship, parenting, and life. Kenneth Chu, the show host brings in a different guest every episode to share how to perfectly balance parenting and work. Today, more than ever, you can choose to live life on your own terms, to craft a future for yourself and your family that is emotionally and financially rewarding. So sit back and enjoy the show. Kenneth, we are feeling guilty 24-7. 24-7, okay? Hi everyone, welcome to episode 57 of Mother Industries Live Show where we talk about entrepreneurship, parenting and life. I'm the host Kenneth Chu and I'm also the author of Mother Industries. This is my book here and Mother Industries is... Um, in my book, I've interviewed 15 mompreneurs that I personally know in the past 10 years and I work with them, um, help them in the business. The reason because I was working for Motherhood Magazine and most of my clients are mothers. And in this book, uh, other than interviewing them, I will also share with the mothers who are reading the book that you can use the three P's for you to start the business, which is passion, purpose, and profit. So today is not about me. If you want to grab a copy, you can uh, see on the link. I guess it's on the other side. You can grab a copy at motherindustries.com. So today is not about me. Today is about this really, really awesome lady that I've met. Um, she's very, very inspiring and uh, it's it's really hard to get her onto the show but i'm so glad that today i got her on the show and she really made time uh so today um this really awesome lady she's a ceo of sc beauty network she's a ceo of spellers group she's a very very inspiring uh mompreneur she inspired a lot of aspiring mompreneur uh, a lot of mothers uh, she supported them and helped them and I'm so excited to bring her onto the show and she's none, none other than Liza. Let's welcome Yay. Liza. Hi Liza. Hi, hi, how are you? Thank you very much for coming onto my show and making time. I know that um, the pre- previous round we, we wanted to got, got you in but uh, because the weather is really bad. Uh, so yeah. now we have postponed it and finally we are here on live. Really so, excited. Thank yeah. you for having me, Kenneth. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, b- there's a tradition before we start the show. Uh, every mm-hmm. guest gets to post the question of the day out to the audience or, and or to the next uh, next guest. So um, are you ready with, to answer the question of the day posted by the previous guest? Yes. Before yes. We can I'm excited. To start. So uh, let me see. So the question of the day posted by the previous guest is how much of your heavy task are you dedicating to God or the higher power that you believe in? Okay, I, I, I repeat again. The uh-huh. question of the day is, how much of your heavy tasks are you dedicating to God or the higher mind that you believe in? So, okay, I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to assume the question. Mm. So, what are the things that's happening, which are big things that yeah. I leave it to faith uh, yes, or correct. to God believing yeah. in the universe. Actually, I'm a very spiritual yeah. person. Yeah. I actually believe mm. that we can only plan so far, mm. but we have to let the universe determine what will happen tomorrow. Mm. And then we will have to accept it first, even if it's not according to our plan, and then try to make the best of any situation, whether mm. it's good or it's bad. And one thing as well, honestly, I think most of everything I do is very circumstantial. So I only try my best. And I will just let the universe decide uh, mm. tomorrow what actually happened. So wow. I never planned my life because when I started a business, I never even planned to become a CEO. <laughs> but every day, you know, you go through things. And I think the, the lessons that we learn every day really shape us to be a different person. And you get tired of forcing, your, forcing a plan to come and happen in true life. Mm. So you want to give in so that you just accept what's coming and then improve from there. So I would say that yeah, most that of my decisions are actually giving in. Mm, good, good, good. That's a, that's a very good good answer to the question of the day. And now we can officially kickstart. So before um, we go on further, let me just check if you are live successfully and anyone that is tuning in uh, live with us now. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Our audio are good to go. And um, maybe before, uh, be, to, to start off with, Maybe, Liza, you can do a short introduction of yourself. Uh, what are you doing currently doing now for those who do not know you? 
for those uh, that are new to, to you. And also, what were you doing previously? Were you a stay-at-home mom? Were you doing business already? Or uh, what job were you holding? So maybe you can do a short introduction of yourself. Sure, no problem. So um, I was a stay-at-home mother. So I got married at 20. So I was a stay-at-home mother for seven years. At 27, of course, after you have three children, realize how expensive <laughs> Singapore is. You go like, there is not enough money to feed three kids. So I thought I'm going to start a business and I started from home. Mm. So I actually just started my first business selling hair clips. So I oh. thought that it is enough to make $500 extra income per month. Uh, but actually, after two years, I learned to love business. Mm. So I created a support structure navigate my own way learn about business and eventually grow my companies two years later i got funded by investors mm -hmm. so i grew more businesses um, and then at some point i sold all my brick and mortar in 2014 and i developed a tech company which was which is when i'm the ceo right now running mm. it and the tech company went on to raise bigger institutional funding so we end up globalizing ourselves and we are now present in 19 countries Wow. So right now, I stand as a CEO uh, running that as well as supported by my C-level. Mm. So coming from a stay-at-home mom to now leading <laughs> a managing C-level, you can imagine the transition of role, which is really challenging because you're still balancing motherhood and your All child right. is growing up. Yeah. Um, at the same time, so my CTO, CEO and um, CFO is supporting me in Singapore and we operate with a lot of partners, freelancers and our corporate employees in more than eight countries alone. Wow. So that's where the company is going. So globalization is possible despite being a local company. <laughs> and and that, is, uh, that brings us to the topic of the day, which is how to grow a business from local to global. So um, maybe you can share with us, like, why do you want to bring it to global? Because a lot of mothers that I know, they start business, they say, oh, I just want to do it in my small neighborhood or maybe just in Singapore. So what makes you want to bring it to global, like globalize? Exactly. Okay. Globalization is an opportunity for expansion. A lot of people don't realize this until much later. Okay. Number two things. Number one, selling is tiring. Mm. Okay. Because <laughs> trying to convince people in the same community to repeatedly, repeatedly sell, buy from you is mm. actually very tiring. Yeah. So, and being a small market like Singapore, although it's a very strong financial hub, small market in Singapore means every consumer knows every competitor. <laughs> then the market gets saturated. There is price war. There is you know yeah. competitor, you know, a discomfort. So a lot of issues going on where people decided, hey, if I need to put so much energy to convince a local customer. Why not I explore customer outside my country mm. who might also like my product? So basically, the world is your playground. Mm. So if you're not earning enough here, sometimes people explore outside and realize that they're making money outside more than in Singapore. Mm. Singapore is a very good place for investment because our financial hub is mm. very, very secure here. Yeah. So a lot of investors would like to fund a Singapore company, but mm. a lot of investors know that Singapore alone is not able to give enough revenue to every individual business person, unless your business uh, is a different industry. So it depends. But still, if you have an opportunity to explore, just imagine if you can make 10000 a year in mm. Singapore, just times that by three other countries. Mm. Why not that you can make 30, 40,000 a year mm. um, servicing? Because all the customers is the same. If your customer and mothers here, there's also mothers anywhere else. Okay, if your customer like this kind of product, there will also be customers in Malaysia who would like this kind of product. So, but people are too scared to venture because they don't know what the world is outside mm. there. So they're not ready to learn the consumer behavior in a foreign market. But in Singapore alone, I think I suggest people to expand so that your customer, your potential customer pool is never ending. And mm. that's what you want. You want to sell to people who would value your product more than, you know, sometimes always having a price war and competition in a small saturated market. So that's when I think that people should globalize their business mm. to increase their revenue. Okay. So I... What you have shared is something that um that I believe a lot of people do not have that perspective of that. When it's going globalization, a lot of people have the fear. So do you have that fear when you first started your business? Because uh, you were sharing about that you were a stay-at-home mom for many years and you have no business background at all. You do not know, have not done any business at all and you started just a simple business and took it global. 
So what is the thing, uh, what are the fears of going global? What are the unknown things that you maybe can share with the audience so that uh, they have the, the maybe the, the heads up of it, especially uh, you've been there, done that. <clears throat> so what are the challenges that you face when you go global? Because like one of it is mentioned that like maybe Singapore, Singapore audience and Malaysia audience and maybe Indonesia audience are different. The buying habits are different. So what are the challenges? So actually the challenges is basically not having enough information about how they behave. But actually, right, kind of as an e-commerce business, you mm. almost have no liability. It's not as if you mm. necessarily have to open an office in Malaysia, hire Malaysia employees and then put all your stock there. You don't have to make that kind of huge investment. Because now from Singapore, you can transport products anywhere in the world, just shipping mm. from a Singapore hub. So actually, you have very little investment. You just need to make sure that your e-commerce is available for transaction overseas. People also have credit cards and debit cards mm. there. So they can instantly pay via PayPal or mm. payment gateway. And they can make purchases, purchases from you in Singapore. Mm. And when you have an order, you simply ship the order. Very simple. Go to Singapore Post or Get Speed Post and send it across. We are in a very modern era. Not only technology is here to support us, mm. but so is global logistics. Mm. So it is possible now to send stuff very fast across the border with no tax incur, especially for small small product, mm. consumer products. So this encourages already entrepreneurship outside mm. the comfort zone. And there is the only challenges is probably writing content on social media to mm. win the local consumer. Mm. But this can easily be fixed by you studying your competitor in that market. <laughs> so if you're selling this product, just look at your competitor who's selling similar product in mm. Malaysia. Look at the content they put out. What kind of contest are they running? What kind yeah. of marketing campaign do they create? <laughs> so follow the same or adjust and tweak it a little bit personalized to your business and try to apply. Mm -hmm. The thing is, if you have a fear for something because it is unknown, is the more that you should go and find out and try mm. to do it. Because you realize that the war is only worse in your head. When you actually <laughs> apply, you go, oh my God, it is so easy. I should have done it a year ago. Trust me, it's always like that. <laughs> we have this fear because we don't know. But mm. once we know, okay, and we can change ourselves to adapt to, to make sure that we can overcome that fear, we realize that it's not a hassle at all. Mm. And we will be thankful to ourselves that, okay, thanks to my bravery, my courage, <laughs> I finally get to tackle a new market. Mm. And then from there, once you tackle the first market, the first market is always the hardest, okay, the yeah. breakthrough. But once you tackle one market, Malaysia, you go like, why not in Philippines? Why not Indonesia? And then you apply the same process of learning. So just keep an open mind that you're willing to learn and mm. not necessarily what you apply in your home country applies overseas. Mm. You must, as long as you respect that there is sensibility in the country, yep. in the way the consumer behave, you are willing to adjust in order to sell appropriately. Mm. You definitely can make money because consumers are everywhere. Money is everywhere. People are willing to spend. They just, they just wait around on who is selling something to them. Mm. So if you sell to them right and your product has benefit and meaning into their lives, there should be no good reason why you're not making money overseas. Mm. So if you're limiting yourself out of actually nothing that should fear mm. you, then uh, you're losing out. Because a lot of small businesses, especially, they can now sell without even leaving their house. You mm. can still operate yep. from home e-commerce and then you ship in order from Singapore. So actually you have no liability. There should be no good reasons why you don't expand. The first time I, I started my business selling hair accessories. Mm. And to be honest, right, when sometimes I know this, I don't know whether you know this, sometimes when you are a Singapore founded company and you go to a Singapore department store, mm. they don't really acknowledge you. Yeah, yeah, I they, agree. they respect more the US brand. Mm. They respect more the UK brands. Yeah. But for the local brands, <laughs> they don't want. Yep. Okay, because to them, oh, your branding is not there. Your quality is probably not there. So they don't give you even a chance to succeed. Yep. Okay, and this not just happen in Singapore, okay? It also happened in other countries. Malaysia would also have problems in Malaysia department store. Indonesia also the same. Mm. Every department store in local countries prefer overseas okay. brands. Yep. Yes. So what I did was I worked on the reverse psychology and said, okay, if I'm not valued in my home country, <laughs> I most likely will be valued in Malaysia, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I went to Malaysia straight away and uh, I posted and it's correct because you come from a Singapore brand. Mm. They were like, yeah, yeah, come, come into a department store. Yeah. So and that's how I grew there. <laughs> yes, and now, yeah, with your foreign brand. So when you enter Malaysia department store, Singapore will start to look at you differently. Mm. And they're like, wait a minute, if this Singapore brand can enter a foreign yeah. department store, that means it has good quality and value. Yeah. So then Singapore starts to open their mm. contracts to me. So sometimes you have to work overseas first in order to survive back in your home country. <laughs> so that's exactly what, what happened to me. 
wow, this, I can totally resonate with you. Um, especially when 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 I uh, first started off my mother industries, I talk about my book. I feel exactly the same way that you felt that that locals are not supporting local brands or even any other stuff. But when I uh, because in July I just went to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Mm-hmm. And I was like, response was overwhelmed. People were like, wow, you're from Singapore, you're doing this thing, you're empowering mothers, you're um, coaching mothers and all that stuff. And I get a bit overwhelmed. I say, I don't get it, that treatment in Singapore. I get it <laughs> overseas. It's like people really respect, even whether is it a, a male or female, they are just coming to me and, and they engage and they, they ask a lot and, and even supported my book. I was like, I didn't even do anything. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's, it's very, very different. I totally hear you. And that's why I want to stay in Malaysia to promote more because yes. uh, they are, the, the response is there. So you, you, you feel good that you're doing something that, that you wanted to do. And, and coming back, I, I, I see that you are very passionate about um, it bringing it over. But is there anyone that shared with you that, that thought, that, hey, uh, Lisa, you, you can do more than that. You can go overseas. You can go to foreign country. Is there someone that, like a mentor or someone inspiring that inspire you to do that? Or you just had it? <laughs> I'm just really uh, curious. Okay, I, I started dabbling into Malaysia only because mm. I, I, Singapore wasn't giving me any business. So mm. I went overseas and I realized that, hey, if I can make money, I'm willing to work hard. I'm willing to travel every month to make sure that I can make money in the department store there. But I wasn't really focusing on globalizing. I was just trying to sell in a cross-border in just mm. across the country. And I was writing a story about this. So kind of in the, when I was a stay-at-home mom, I was writing the journey about how my business has mm. expanded into Malaysia. And to me, it's not that great of a milestone. Lah. We're just trying to work hard. But to some people who read the story, they mm. really admire the courage and the passion behind yeah. it. So because of them, these strangers become my avid readers on my blog. Mm. And then so two years later, I started to grow ambition to want to do more. Expand in mm. more countries, send out to more countries. And I want to grow other kind of businesses. So I, when I, they say that, okay, you are the person that you hang out with. Mm. If your social circle are people who don't believe in yeah. growth, expansion, scalability, your mm. business will always stay small. So when you want to start expanding overseas, you need to be around the circle who mm. only people with big ideas, yep. big growth, with mm. a growth mindset because you naturally get influenced by them yep. okay, and not be pulled down by, by smaller communities. Mm. So in the year 2011, I put out an idea on Facebook and mm. I said that I have intention to expand and grow my business globally. Mm. And would anybody consider funding me? Because mm. if you really want to grow big, you also need some yeah. kind of capital, marketing boost, something like right. that. And uh, I thought that my community would be like, forget it, you're already doing <laughs> well, just stay put, right? Even my, my family was telling me, don't, don't put so much pressure yeah. and stuff like that. But there are a couple of strangers that year, 2011, and they, to me, they're strangers because I never heard of them, but mm. they have been following me on my blog for yeah. six months. And they commented and they said that we will fund you. Yeah. And I thought this is a joke because who would fund me, right? I'm a stay-at-home mom. I just slightly expanded to Malaysia. So within one week, I got my first investment of US 75000 mm. So since then, you have no choice. You have to expand because the money is <laughs> given yes, to yes. you. Yeah, correct. So whether it's going to be a, you know, a headache, you still have to invest the money. So that's the start of everything. Then I realized that when you have bigger dreams, mm. bigger investment comes in. Yeah. Because people want to invest in people who have big dreams. Yes. Okay, so that's how, and you will always be supported as long as you do business genuinely. Yep. People will always come back and support you. Hey, do you need more funds? <laughs> do you need to grow some more? Do you need this and that? So that's escalated all the way, capital raise, investment, and that's how we got here today. Wow, wow. That, that is very inspiring. Strangers and, believe in me, yes. All right. And, and that is totally true because when, even for me, like to, to, to write the book, it's, it's never possible. But I do have like mom printers telling me, Kenneth, kind of, you can, you really have to put out the story because, um, because I understand that a lot of mom printers like you, 24 hours is not enough. You have, you have two kids, right? So you have two, oh, three, oh yeah, three kids, sorry. Three kids and also, uh, you have a multiple businesses that you're running concurrently. And, and you, you can see that kind of energy that you have and a lot of mothers say, oh, I want to be like Lisa. And I, I feel you because, uh, and also having strangers to come and support you is, is unbelievable, especially the first one that come in. Like for me, when I, when I start raising funds to, uh, to get sponsorship for my book, 
uh, I just go to my close friends or on the mompreneurs that I know. And, and exactly like what you see, they, I have strangers that has no relation, like she's not a mompreneur. Yeah. She's just a sales trainer and say, Kenneth, I believe in your vision. I believe in your the, the, the vision of empowering more mothers. Although I'm not a mom, I'm still single, but I believe in that. And she's just sponsored, sponsored for my book to raise the fund for, for it. And, and that, that is like amazing, like stranger people supporting you, which is, yeah. which makes you even want to work harder. Yes. Makes exactly. you want to, like, I have to get a book out. I have to promote the book. I have to speak a lot about the book. Like for you, your business has to go on. Like stranger money is even harder. It's like, yeah. oh, someone believe in me. I, I guess that's the, that's the part where a lot of mothers struggle. They do not have people that believe in them because their circles are like that. They are, they are, they are family members, they are friends. It's not that they are not supportive. But when you have strangers, people that is outside your circle, that's supporting you, that pushes you even more. And, yes. I, and now I understand where you get all that energy from, all that um, motivation from. It's from you being a stranger to them, but they are following you. Then they then uh they became a friend of yours also after I believe that when they supported you they believe in you, um it's it's very very important there's the belief like for you is you go with the flow and when it comes you embrace it and uh yes. I think the courage I I guess from whatever you shared I I guess it's the courage for you just I have no uh no, there's no harm asking there's no harm putting it online there's no harm. Yes. No harm, uh, which is also to overcome the fear of uh, what will people think of me? What will people think of Lisa? What will people think of my small small business stuff like that? So I I guess that's a that's a thing that a lot of people lack of not just mothers, a lot of entrepreneurs lack of the courage to really um jump into something that they dream of, and having a bigger dream. So what do you think is the reason of mom uh that is stopping mothers from starting business from from experience? Uh, okay, from my experience, uh, personal experience, the kind of limiting factors that mothers have issues is number one is having a strong support structure. Mm. We have children, okay? So you know what that means? That means uh, kind of we are feeling guilty 24-7. <laughs> 7 okay? Even if when I travel last time and I signed a $100,000 contract, I'm still crying on the plane because mm. I miss my children. Especially missing like days like Mother's Day or birthday. You come a day late. Yeah, your children forgives you, it's okay. But to you, it's very hard to accept, okay, yeah. as a mother. So this guilt overwhelms me all the time. I'm trying to build a good life for my family, but I'm sacrificing my time with my children. And then in the end, I come home, I may get tired, so I'm not giving the quality time that they need from me. So these kind of challenges is, is a problem. But if you have a good support structure, mm. people who love and believe in you, yeah. that they know, okay, mommy has to go to work, so let me take care of her affairs. Mm. So for example, having a good support husband, yeah. having a parents. So while you go, you don't have to worry about what's happening at home, whether yeah. it's your children being fed, uh, and are they looked after well by the domestic helper. You thought about all these questions, okay? And to other to business people, these are very trivial, small matters. Yeah. But to mother, it's a big deal, okay? Right. Yeah. What the children eat, where did they shower, is your homework done, it's very important. Mm. So therefore, you want to know that there's somebody that you trust so much yeah. that would take care of your affairs and make it priority, <laughs> knowing that it's important to you. Then if you have that, right, when you go out there and really hunt a business down, mm. you will win, okay? Because you don't have this burden you carry at home. Right. That's it, I'm going to get this $100 contract, 100000 contract for my family and you will really achieve it. Because you know that you have a strong support taking care of your affairs. Mm. So having a good support structure is very important. Which means talk to your partner, talk yep. to the people that you will love and ask them, hey, I need to travel. If I don't, I miss this opportunity. Is it okay if you look after my children for mm. a while? Work out some sort of compensation that makes, that makes it fair for the yeah. other person as well. So last time, and uh, last time for me as well, when I sit down, everybody, I actually, um, I was married at time and I wanted to grow my business. Mm. So um, at that time, I was married with my first husband. So I told him, okay, you know what? You quit your job. Okay, that's, that's a bit extreme. <laughs> but because I know that if I wanted to really travel every month, I need to make sure somebody speaks all the time yeah. with my children. They're all under four. Mm. And he did that. So mm. he sacrificed that. He stayed at home for five years. Wow. So, and while I built the business year after year after year. So this is like a partnership. Sometimes mm. one person sacrifices a career or mm. put it on hold yeah. because they believe the other person has bigger potential yeah. to succeed. So it's a fair trade. Not everybody say, oh, okay, my husband always have to go to work. I always have to stay at mm. home. This is modern time. So yeah. it changed a little bit. Secondly, my advice is 
women always want to be a superwoman. Okay, they want to do everything themselves. I'm going to do the laundry. I'm going to clean up. I want to organize this. I want to do my business. Honestly, if you want to do a business, okay, and handling children, <clears throat> giving eight hours a day to your company is a lot of you, a lot of energy mm. out of you because you also have to look after children. Yeah. So you want to give your business the best hours, quality hours, okay, yeah. which is not going to be eight hours a day. But if you're going to spend half the day doing household chores, getting so tired, then you're giving the second half, which is the lousiest time of the day mm. to your business. Yeah. So you don't want that. So for example, don't you think that it's better for you to focus on your business, earn more money and invest maybe $40 a week, get somebody to come and clean yeah. your house for you. All right. Outsource. Keeping, you know, like yes. Outsource those kind of things, okay? Even people say, what is this? A housewife cannot do housework. Doesn't matter, okay? You go <laughs> and build the business. And that's what I did. I hate mm. household chores. I hate it so much. So I focus on my business, okay? So I make enough money to invest a little yeah. bit to get people to do my work. So I, every day, I don't have to worry about household chores. I don't sweat about household chores. Mm. I just focus my business, spend time with my children, back to my business, so on and so forth. Mm. And also the same thing for the business work. So for example, graphic design, yeah. website design. Yeah. You know you need an e-commerce site, mm. but you know you're not an expert, right? right. So if you're going to learn and spend, it's going to take you six months designing. Might as well you invest a small amount of money. Nowadays, you can also build easy templates. Yeah. Okay, or you can get people to graphic design for you. Mm. Pay them a small amount of money. Hey, can you create my posters, my brand properly? And by that investment, you get quality work because yeah. people are experts. If you want to learn everything, honestly, it is not possible to yeah. learn everything. So therefore, you need to see which areas of your business you can outsource so that mm. you can focus the most important, which is business development and sales. Yeah. This is the most important. That, that is where I, the money is. That's where the money is. Sometimes <laughs> I ask a mompreneur, did you make any money today? And she'd be like, no, I was busy packing and color yeah. coordinating my Correct. files. You know, those are not going to make you money. You can might as well pay a PA $7 an hour to do yeah. that two hours a day while you go out and hunt for business in hundreds and thousands, yeah. then it makes sense. So that's why I've been trying two things, outsource and having a good support structure is important. Until you work this both out, mm. you cannot, it's very hard to escalate to the next level of business. All right. And, and I, I, I guess what you have shared is a lot of mothers, they would know that they need to outsource, but it's always that thought of, I can do it better, like house, um, household chores. Ah, I, I do a better job than the housekeeping person. There's always have that I do better than others. But if you if your focus is on, on your business and your family, the household chores should not be something that you need to be good at. This is yes. something that a lot of them are holding on. <clears throat> and for you is um to get someone that you trust. And a lot of mothers typically, um, I would say uh, a lot of times you say, Oh, I, I can take out my, my daughter um, or my son better than my husband. Like yesterday I was asking this um this mother. Uh, in, in fact, my client that I was helping uh, over the weekends, she said, oh, I, I can do everything. I can cook better. I can do the household chores. I can take care of my two kids better. I said, hey, but you're not run, now running a business. Why don't you let your husband? But he, do, he, he, he can't. But speaking from a, a, from a husband's standpoint, I would feel that for us, we really want to, we love our wife a lot. We don't want them to really work so hard, get tired. We really want to contribute. We want her to, to help them to share the burden. But sometimes we don't even get that chance. So I just yeah. tell my client that you just trust him. He can do a job, but it may not be as what you wanted, but the result is the same. He can take care so that you can focus more on your business rather than yes. thinking of your kids when you are at business. So, and, and the part, uh, the other thing that I realized is also letting go. Like yeah. letting go, like, okay, I should focus on business. I should focus on earning the money and I should let go of the responsibility of taking care of uh, parenting my children and all that stuff. How did that work for you? Like, how did that letting go? Or it was easy for you? Oh, actually, uh, initially it's really hard. Okay, it's really hard for me. Okay, because for example, I, I wanted to. I don't want to give up the opportunities of bonding with my children yeah. to someone else. Okay, because these are times you don't get back. You know, mm. if your children is a child, if a baby or your toddler is a child, and you let other people take care most of her, then you do. Mm. Then you know eventually the bond is formed with the other right. person, not you. Okay, again, mother sleep guilty. I told <laughs> right, you again, we're guilty. always guilty. <laughs> they are always guilty. So I start to actually identify, okay, the things that I cannot, I cannot let go mm. and how I can make it quality wise. Yeah. So for example, when I look at my children, 
And I know that, let's say, when they were babies last time, and there's some things that I also don't enjoy doing. For example, showering and changing nappy every one hour. I actually don't like this process. So this process, I can get my helper at that time to mm. help. But when it comes to playing with my children, mm. when it comes to spending time with my children, I want to be the person. Yeah. So you identify the activities on what gives you a stronger hold in bonding mm. and you do just that. Mm. And the rest, you have to compromise to let other people take care of mm. it because you have to accept that you also need to sleep, you need personal time, mm. you have your own personal aspirations. And same thing with work as well, right? Yeah, sometimes mothers are right. When we outsource it, Lisa, I paid a graphic designer. I actually think this is not what I want. The question is, if you were to do it, how much time does it take you? Yeah. So, which means that how much time do you lose from making money? Mm. If you can make money $50 an hour and you lose four hours designing a poster, $200. you lose 200 <laughs> When now you use this guy, he does it. Yeah, we only pay him like maybe $30. But you never you make more because out of the same period of time you make two hundred minus thirty you make excess, so you need to counterfy this calculation and mm. then you realize that okay it may not be exactly what I want, but it's seventy percent there. Yeah. Same thing with hiring employees. Last time, right? I always mm. complain to my husband. <laughs> This is not the way I want it done, okay? Yeah. My employees don't understand. I need it the way it is. But my husband tell me, if your employee does 100% like you, they mm. will not work for you. Correct. Simple. <laughs> yeah. They, they yeah, can think totally. like you. If they can do exactly better than you, yeah. most likely they will be freelancers or they will run their own company. They yeah. will work for you. Or they will be your competitor. <laughs> uh, or they will be your competitor. Okay? So therefore, naturally, when mm. you outsource and have people, you have to reduce the expectation. Right. Of course, not to 20%. Mm. La, that's too bad. But maybe 70% of your usual output. Correct. Then you let it go. Okay? Yeah. And then you focus on other things that generates you money. Because anyway, money making is not about postal making. Money yeah. making is about relationship. Mm. That is between you and your customer. So when you focus on relationship, you still make money end of the day. Yeah. Whether your poster is top notch or second <laughs> class. Okay? Because the relationship is the one that determines the business. That is what you need to take a stronger hold on. Wow. wow. This, this, this is the part I, I believe that a lot of audience or the mothers that, that are tuning in, they should listen to this because... um. This is something that I always tell, tell a lot of my clients. Focus on the daily activities that generate income, which I call the income generating activities, rather than those non-generating income. Um, this is something I go through with them, like the activities that is earning income, then you focus on it. And also, uh, from this book by uh, is it Tim, Tim Ferriss, uh, mm -hmm. which is about um, four hour work week. So yeah. he, he talked about this uh, outsourcing. So you have to identify what are the activities like you mentioned, like for even for motherhood, the, the showering, all that is something that you don't like, you can outsource it. The same with business, the way you handle parenting, the way you manage parenting or motherhood is the same way you manage a business. If you identify that you're not good at graphic, then outsource it. Just spend a bit of money. There's a lot of platforms like Fibo, Upwork, really, that yes. you can get really, really good price, like $5 USD, you get decent work if not they, you can get it refund so yeah. then you can get until the, the job the other thing that you mentioned that um about the time if you have the time definitely you can learn all these things but as a mother 24 7 is not even enough for you to do anything just by like parenting so you need to need to understand the, the the power of outsourcing especially as a mother that's why i always encourage mother to leverage on two things technology or internet for you yep. to build your business so that you have can have can build a system if not then you have to build up what i call the leadership team like for you you know that you need to employ people you need to set our expectation lower and that is very important because if you can do everything then how about your children how about motherhood that's where the guilt comes but when you start to think that you can leverage your system you can outsource it you can have build a leadership team you can trust your employees to run the business with or without you it's not like letting go of that, but the major decision has to be done by you. You have to determine that. Uh, it's about allocating yep. and also delegating jobs, which mm -hmm. I, I believe that to kind of sum up with what, what you have shared with us uh, uh, earlier on. And I realized that um, a lot of times the support team is very, very important. Like for me, mm -hmm. I have my support team, my mom. My mom is taking care while, of my, my daughter while we are on live. And I, I, I believe it's about communicating. Like a lot of Mom criminals, they don't communicate with their husband of the decision they're going to make in their business, the yeah. commitment they're going to do. And what you have done is, is um, I don't really get to hear a lot from a lot of mothers. A lot of time, the, the mother don't get to 
be the same. The husband is always the one to say. The husband will say, okay, don't do this thing and don't do that thing. But the husband is not involved in the business. But for you, you are very sharp. You know that what you need. You communicate across. You, you see what are the support you can get. You can compromise. And the key thing is um, you are focusing on the money making. That means uh, focusing yes. on the income generating. That will compensate for a lot of things. A lot of mothers is keep struggling because they are they are they are distracted. They are not uh, focusing on the income generating and also uh, neglecting on the. They are spending so much time on the non income generating that also take up a lot of time of their parenting. Yeah. Where 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 uh, it can be complemented by outsourcing where it's not even even uh, addressed. So let's say going back in time, what uh, if you have started your business back then? What would you have done differently? Because I, I, I see that you're very sharp, but I believe that you, you, you learn along the way through all the, the hurdles, the obstacles, and also people uh, sharing with you. So if you were to go back in time, what would you do differently? In your business? Okay. Uh, there is a few things that I would learn to do differently. I only learn sometimes it's like that. Okay, life, they give you the experience first, but the lessons later. A bit too late. Lah, huh? But you're hoping that the next time it doesn't happen again. One of the biggest challenges why mompreneurs uh, or mothers who grow a business have problems is because we are not uh, per se born corporate. Some mm. of us has been a stay-at-home mom for a long yeah. time. Okay, so when we go back into building our own business and hiring people, we are creating a corporate world. Hmm. But we have lose the momentum of how to run a corporate world because yeah. it's very different. If you're a solopreneur, flexibility of time, everything is yours. Okay, you have the power to change plans whenever you yeah. want to change plans. But when you run a company, you're leading people, it's slightly different. You're yeah. making investment on salaries, you're making investment in offices. Oh. So every dollar becomes questionable. Yeah. Okay, it's not that you're becoming stricter, but you mm -hmm. have to, especially you take investments. Mm. One thing that I must say that if you want to do direct leadership to your own team, it's actually one of the hardest jobs of a CEO. <laughs> Hardest job is managing people. Yeah. If you have a product, okay, and you scold the product, the product is not going to scold you back, okay? Yeah. So, it's, it's much easier handling stock. I'm not saying that I scold people, but people, they come with attitude. They yeah. come with character. They come with different background, different educational background. They come with a lot of issues themselves, yeah. okay? And as a business owner, you try your best to align their personal goal and corporate goal. But at the same time, you're absorbing all their energy, which may not be positive all the time. And you're trying to stay on top of your business. And these are the things that actually pulls you down a little bit. Okay, so sometimes I want to say that if I had a choice, I would be very, very, very more careful mm. in selecting people. Mm. Because even though education is important, attitude is number one. Yeah. Attitude has to be first. Right. Somebody can have a lot of problems, but they go to work with a right attitude. I mean, work, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to learn. I'm going to take my boss advice and criticism and improve. That is the mindset you want. Hmm. And not everybody has that. So that's yeah. why they say, hire slow, fire fast. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's what they say. Okay, and that's how I learned. So I made a lot of wrong moves okay, hmm. by investing my capital investment into labor that does not fit my business hmm. model. And because of that, I suffer losses because mm. I let people stay on longer than they should. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes we're kind. We're like, okay, maybe next month they will change. Maybe next month they will yeah, be productive. Yeah. But what they don't realize is when they quit, they move on and get a new job. All but right. when they quit, we have to clean the mess. We mm. have to cover the debt. We have All to right. answer the reason for their investment. Yeah. And this is so stressful. Even after, six months after they left, I'm still yeah. stressed. Yeah, so, and then I, the mess. Yeah. That's why I realized that I changed my model so that I cut down on paid full-time employees, mm. but I rather pay more yeah. for outsource uh, experts deliverable. Yep. So that's how I, I manage so that I don't have to worry about going to work and wondering whether who comes to work on time, who All comes right. late, who's going on long breaks because... All my people are contractual freelancers yep. and only my C-levels and managers are full-time. So they are already very experienced people. Mm. So that is one of my uh, mistakes that I made, uh, firstly. And secondly, obviously, is to hold your money until you see um, revenue. Yeah. That's the thing. When you raise capital investment, you have so much money to spend because the objective was giving you money so you can spend, right? right. On marketing, on this, on that. But until you see, let's say, and when you want to spend those money, it should be multiple phases. Phase mm, one, phase two, yep. phase three. You set up the money, phase one, you wait mm. for returns first. And then you set up more money on phase two. Yep. But that's what 
when I in the beginning when I start my business, I don't understand that because like I said, I'm from a stay home mom, right? <laughs> this is the first time I'm holding money. I'm like, okay, spend all, right? <laughs> spend all in three months, right? But then when returns don't come, not because your plan sucks, but because there's a lot of circumstance that yeah. comes along the way, issues, people leaving, coming, unexpected. Then you don't have cash flow surplus to recover. Mm. That's when your business can really go downhill. And to be honest, right in two thousand and fourteen, sorry, two thousand and thirteen, mm. um, actually, uh, two thousand fourteen December, I went. My companies went bankrupt wow. because of this malpractice. Okay, just I couldn't. I invest a lot of human leader, human leadership, mm. but the human resources were not bringing in returns because, like I said, people are hard to manage. Yeah. And then they leave, but the business couldn't recover because the mess is so much. Yeah. And I become a one person out of nineteen employees. I went back to one person wow. handling nineteen roles is too much. So by the end of the year, we um we offset all our assets and we still have a pending debt. So we went into bankruptcy in two thousand and fourteen. Mm. So that's the painful lesson we learned. But of course, after that, um, eighteen months later, we raised more capital. We recover and when we globalize. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I and then I learned my lesson. And then now when I globalize and take the next round of funding, I don't repeat the mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why it's easier to grow. For me, it's now so much easier to grow. And the four-hour work week is a very good book. People yes. should read <laughs> Yes, yes. I totally agree. Because from me, I, I understand a lot and I implement, I share it with a lot of uh, mummies that I coach, which is very important because they don't, they, I, I guess a lot of us, we do not know what we do not know. Until we 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 committed mistake like for you it's a painful mistake but it helped you to become stronger you climb you know, I believe faster than your previous you get into yes. that that momentum faster you get to that point or even exceed that point faster that that is how we learn and it's it's the same with growing up like from a kid from a toddler from baby start exploring climbing falling and all that stuff we need to learn all this entrepreneurship is not a bit of roses. This is something one of the more pronunciation already. Like it's not a bit of roses, kind of. So I understand it's not, but you are. So if you are a rose, you can just um fight all obstacles, you just keep on getting beautiful and beautiful. And this is something that I, I felt that um a lot of my uh, mothers or even or anybody who's step into entrepreneurship, they feel that entrepreneurship is a bit of roses. And a lot of times it's not. But for those who hang on, those who bite on, those who grind on, like for you, you became, I would say, more uh, empowering and more powerful each time that you, you learn from your mistake. And, and, and from the mistake, that's when now you're empowering other mothers to, uh, with your experience, with your advice, uh, with your coaching and all that, uh, and your mentoring. <coughs> that's how they can become better and better each time. And for me, it's because I work with a lot of mothers in the past 10 over years in their business. So I've seen successful business. I've also seen unsuccessful business. And from that, I can share that. Okay, so let's say um, Mrs. Hu, uh, Mrs. Ng, you're, you're, whatever you're going to do, right, is going to be like that. So my advice is like, because I've seen a mother that did exactly the same thing and went down this, this, this path. So the other way to rectify it is to go up here. So I, I guess it's the experience that you have that makes you uh, make decision better. And also sometimes um, it's not, it's not um, as, as powerful as uh, you overcoming it than someone telling you. Yes. Like a lot of time we have advice from people that have been there, done that, but we don't listen until we really fall. Oh, I know what Ken was talking about. I know what is Laser talking yeah. about. <laughs> But uh, but I would say that because we plan to sit there, we have let them know, and yes. when that time happened, they know how to react. Yes. Yeah. Correct. So sometimes we, we understand because we were like that before. Like some uh, some mentor tell us, "Oh, Kenna, you should not do that." Then I, I would just still do it. But when that happened, oh, okay, the who said well, whatever he said is correct. So I but I know how to rectify it because he has shared with me. So that that's the power <clears> of uh, having um, the right people, people who have been there, done that, uh, mentoring you, giving you great advice, but it will come in very handy. Yeah. And also, exactly. and also, um, do you believe in balancing both motherhood and business? Because you have shared with me like you outsource, and dedicate, and all that stuff. So do do you believe in that? Balancing motherhood and business, yeah. yeah. Um, 
I think sometimes uh, for some for whatever reason, sometimes when people just know me and then they read my track records and say, oh, she's in university, she's in conferences. Of course, lah, maybe because she's single and has no commitment at home. And I'm like, excuse me, I have three children, okay? <laughs> Even before I start the business. So you, I've been growing it while I manage my three children. Mm. Um, one thing, I, as a spiritual person, I believe that family is everlasting. Mm. Business is not. Yeah. Sorry to say that business is a temporary phase in our lives, which we need okay, for fulfillment, empowerment, and for our financial needs. That's it. At some point, when we already achieve enough to retire, the financial needs is no mm. longer a need. We don't need the business. Yeah. Okay, we don't need business anymore so much because, hey, I have enough to retire. The reason, one of the main reasons why we are doing business or part of a business by working for someone else is because we have this financial need that we mm. have to raise the people we love. Yep. Nobody works hard for a company <laughs> as much as they work hard for their family. Yep. They work hard for their personal interests. I want to buy a car next year. Right. I want to send my children to university. I want to have enough to retire. I want to give my wife a diamond ring. It's all for personal reason why people input energy into work. All right. Okay, and then they try to make themselves happy by being fulfilled, you know, going after career progression because they know they have to work anyway. Might as well do well in it. All right. Okay, so when I say about balance, right, remember that when you make a sacrifice too much imbalance, giving yeah. more to work than less to family, it is something that you will regret later because mm. many people, when they interview a lot of people who die at their dying bed, mm. nobody talks about how much money they have left yes. in the bank. People right. always talk about how much memories they should have made with the people yes. they love and they didn't. Okay, and it will call, all come back to you. That's the scary part because yeah. your children is forever tied to you. Right. So if you don't spend enough time with them, you are not there during the glorious moments. To you, ah, their sports day is nothing. But to them, the sports day was everything. Mm. Okay, and over time, your children start to lose respect for you because you are never there in their specific moment. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then that time when they grow up and they don't open up to you, they don't share things with you, you cannot entirely blame them. This is the effect mm. of being absent in motherhood, in parenting. Yeah. So for me, that if people want to do it, you have to find a balance. A, by respecting your family and yeah. yourself even. One day, you can break your day into three parts. One is for your business to earn yeah. a living. One is for yourself to, you know, to be uh, empowered on your own. And one is for your family. And mm. all of them try to give quality faces of time. Mm. Because uh, you don't want, every time I think about, about you doing too much work, right, Kenneth? I yeah. say, oh my God, I send my, sit my desk for eight hours. I try to put myself in a moment of the future. Mm. And if I ask myself, is it worth it that my children's going to tell me you are never there? Yeah. And how heartbreaking I would feel at yeah. that time. And then it would take me back into my other world, which is motherhood. Mm. So for me, sometimes, yes, you target for $1,000 income today. And let's say you don't achieve it. You mm. spend eight hours, you spend six hours, and you realize that I've only made $400. Then what you need to do is spend some time alone Okay, mm. firstly, strategize for tomorrow, strategy, so yeah. you can try to recover. And then just dis disengage yourself and then just go back to your children. And sometimes I really believe that children is your source of inspiration yes. okay, and to put the energy back in you because business is something you want to give up all the time. Mm. But when you look at your children and you go like, oh, I cannot give up because I'm doing it for my children. Yes. So actually, instead of you thinking they depend on you, honestly, you depend on them mm. because you depend on them to push you forward. Otherwise, you would have already given up on yourself. So they are one of your investors yes. okay, because they invest in you. Yes. Okay, And no child will not believe their parent. That's the thing. Your children is always your number one fan. Right. They are not going to read some defamation and think something different of their mother. No, they're going to see your mother and say, Mommy, you can do it. You can do it. And even their simple words, not really understanding the full scale, but just that is enough to keep a worn down entrepreneur moving. Mm. So that's why I believe that motherhood must be balanced for your personal, spiritual self mm. in the future. Because um, materials don't stay. Right. Clients come and go. Business, rise and fall. Stock also <laughs> up and down. Okay. So at the end of the day, you got enough food to eat. You have a good shelter. When there's a time to progress, you do, but not compromising with the people you love because relationship is matters. Would you rather have a lot of money but no one to come home to? Mm. Or would you be okay with losing a job and losing money for the day knowing that when you come home, your family is around you? Yeah. So make your choice. Wow. wow. That, that is really, really empowering, um, very inspiring because the part that you break it down, uh, which is uh, like self, business, and family. A lot of times I see a lot of mothers, especially those who are doing business, they only have business and family. They do not have the self. They do not even invest on self-love or self-care themselves. 
and that's why spiritually or emotionally or even physically they they, they uh deplete over time yes. and, and what you have pointed out uh, is really that balance it's not just family and business family and business there's also a portion of yourself you cannot forget about yourself you know, cannot forget about your health you cannot forget about your 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 uh, caring that means to your your maybe your your grooming or your confidence because all this add add into the factor of you yes. taking care of yourself, feeling good. Like for you, you always take care of yourself. Like you when when you feel tired, you have to focus on resting. And and something that I uh from what you have shared, I also realized that uh that was also the reason why I encourage a lot of mothers. If they are at that juncture thinking that what what uh, am I going to do the same old thing in this job for the next three to five years? Am yeah. I going to be the manager? where I do not want to be like my manager five years down the road because I will eventually reach that point that I'll become the manager. When I want to yeah. be that, if that come across to your mind, try doing something. Start a business. Be it online. Do something that you're passionate about. And that's where I always tell mother that other than leveraging on internet and technology or build a leadership team, build a business around motherhood. Something that you can embrace motherhood, you can help another mother, or you can build a business that, that makes you feel better, that you can bring your children along. Like my, my client, she's doing baby products. She can bring her children to her booth doing the events. And, and other mothers say, hey, you are bringing your children and do business. They feel more related. And you also make friends from there. You make friends with your clients who are mothers. They, they can resonate with you. And it help you in your business. And your business is not just about just making money, also um, having that, that, that balance in that you can bring your children and your children can help you in the business. Like my, my daughter always helped me in packing on goodie bags for my workshop and the stuff like that. She's always volunteering. They want to be made useful. They want to feel useful to you. Yes. They want to bond with you. So these are things that I feel that these are life skills that we can teach our children. And also uh, having that balance uh is also important a lot of time they, they they focus too much like let's say focus too much on business then they lack of the family or they focus too much on family then there's no income coming in yeah. and they are worried so so, yes. so if it, it's like allocating like you say one day you have to allocate certain time i mean eight hours to yourself eight hours to your family eight hours but it's not the same for everyone everyone have different like for me i'm very like 70 percent family 30 percent on business that's why i have to always think that how am i going to uh, build my business in a way that I do not have, I do not, I, I'm leveraging on systems or uh, automate my, my, my yes. whole business. So, because I want to have more time with my family, with my daughter, I want to coach her, I want to spend more time with her, things like that. But it may not work for another mother. The other mother maybe feel more fulfilling, building more in the business, maybe 70 in the business, 30% in the family, but you have to find another 70 that can help. Like for you, is getting your, your your um, husband to come in to take care of the kids to take care of the home so they can focus 70 percent on the business but all this percentage will changes will change over time like yes. now i believe you have more percentage in the family because your business is yes. picking up so this is yes. this is a phrase that i always tell a lot of mothers that your business will if uh, your business percentage will evolve over time like if your children is going like p6 psle then maybe 70 percent into family then 30 percent in your business but you have to plan for it. You have to strategize that you need to build a system or leverage it or, or, or build a leadership team before it comes to the, the, the year where your children is having PSLE. So like for me now, my daughter is P4 uh, and after two more years, she's in PSLE. So I would believe I would need to spend more time. Then that's where I need to build on system, build a team or whatever that can uh, loosen my time so that I can spend more time with her while the business is still running. So. And, and time really flies and really have a lot of golden nuggets from laser. And, uh, any, um, and how do they get connected with you? Because you share a lot of golden nuggets. I believe you will want to uh, share more if you have an opportunity to share your advice or even help them in any ways. So how can uh, uh, the audience get connected with you, Laser? Uh, I'm on Facebook, so um, they can find me, Lisa Klang, on Facebook. I'm also on LinkedIn, which is, uh, LinkedIn is more businessy, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you're more into business, LinkedIn is the best platform. I write articles about business and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Facebook is a mix of business and motherhood. Um, I'm also on Instagram, so if you can chit chat there, um, as well as I write a blog, lisaklang.com. Mm -hmm. So I write about my experiences when I speak at a conference, when I connect with people, people I meet. So all this, I hope that could be golden nuggets mothers can take away. So I think some 
sometimes the answers that we want to find are not in books. So yeah. sometimes reading through other people's experiences who made time to write it down actually will leave a bigger impact than yeah. reading a whole textbook. <laughs> so hopefully that's my that's my mission. I always tell people that I'm not perfect. Mm. I'm still learning. And trust me, no matter what stages of your business, whether you're a small 100K company or bigger 1 million company, problems will come. And they come in different shapes and sizes. So the more you read about other people's challenges, the more you are ready and equipped. It's like a seed, right? It's planted in you. So when it's your turn and you have the same problem, you remember the story of someone else who's been there and done that and see whether you can take that as a solution to solve your own problem. Because problem is guaranteed. That <laughs> is for sure. Yes. Even even like for motherhood, it be for business, even for relationship, every yes. time we have problems. If we don't have problems, we're not living because <laughs> well, because we live life so cautiously. That means we're not living life at all. Okay, yes. so problems will come. Yes. And that's what life is all about. And uh, thanks a lot, Lisa. Maybe last but not least, uh, as you know, there's a tradition that every guest mm -hmm. gets to post a question of the day out to the audience and also to the next guest. And now it's your turn. So uh, what is your question of the day? Okay, so I would like to say, okay, that because I'm also an angel investor, so mm. I'm always curious to know for those people who are running a small size growing company, mm. if you are given a hundred thousand mm. dollars investment today, mm. what will be the next three things you would do to develop your company? Mm, okay. That's a question investor always asks. I want to know. Mm. Have you thought about what if you're given hundred k? Mm. What would be the three next things you would do that will propel your business to the next level with this capital investment? Okay. So I repeat again. So if you will be given, you you will be given a hundred k in your mm -hmm. for your business. What would be the three things that you will do to propel your business, right? Yes, correct. The next three things you do. Of course, you're going to do probably a hundred mm. things, but what is the next, very next three things that you've been dying to do? Expansion, what are you going to do? Mm. Uh, I want to know what's 100,000 oh, cool. going to do for your okay. business. So it's a big, mm. yeah. yeah. So I repeat again. So the question of the day posted by Laser is if you will be given 100K in your business, what will be the three things uh, to do to propel your business? Okay. Yes. So this go out to the next guest and also out to the audience. If the audience that listening, tuning in, if you have your answer, do put it in the comment section. And uh, Laser and me will be very, very uh, happy to, to, to read, read about it. So uh, last but not least, Laser, any last advice for the mothers who are thinking of coming into business, pursuing their passion? What is your last advice for them? Um, actually, I think that a lot of mothers, I want to encourage them to do a lot of networking. So a lot of mothers give the excuse that uh, I got no time to network. So I'm not asking you to go and network every evening, okay? Because you also have to prepare food on the table. But probably put yourself and make it compulsory that as a business owner, make it compulsory that you attend at least two networking events per month. Mm. Okay, and when you go to a networking event, genuinely get connected to people and don't worry about being interesting, but more genuinely be interested in what people do. Your job is not to tell people what you do, but more to know what they do so you can find a synergy another day. Mm. Without network, business cannot grow, you cannot leverage, you cannot tap, you cannot collaborate. So be open to these three things, uh, Be collaborate and not compete, I always say. Don't see your competitors as your enemy. Yes. Because of your competitors, that's why your business is still existing. <laughs> so therefore, network and go out there and connect with people and meet new people all the time. Mm. That's, that's very good advice and um, hope all the mothers understand the power of networking and do go out. And uh, like Lisa, you don't have to do it every evening. You don't have to do it once a week, you just do it twice. So uh, that's the, the very good advice from Laser and thanks Laser for making time uh, to come onto the show to share so many golden nuggets to all the mothers, to all the listeners that are tuning in. And uh, thank you very much and thank Kenneth you. here signing off with Laser. Thank you for watching this episode and we shall see you in the next episode. Thank you guys. See you. Thank you. Bye Laser. Bye bye. bye.